Hey everybody, welcome back to A Brief on Grief. Today I want to discuss the last myth that the authors have in the book um, on the top six myths of dealing with grief. This last one is, again, <laughs> probably say this all the time, they're all very important, they're all very prevalent, but this one rings true a lot in my life and, and just the way I see um, different people in my life and the way our kind of Western culture works, for sure. I can't speak for the other part of the world per se, but, but this culture, this one is definitely a very popular one. This myth is keep busy. So when you're suffering grief and all the painful feelings involved in that after a loss, um, a, I know all of us <laughs> have heard at least one person in our life, but probably multiple people at multiple times tell us, oh, just keep busy, keep busy, um, keep active, um, have lots of fun things on your list or things to keep you busy and it will pass the time and and things will eventually get better uh, this one as you may have heard in those words it's actually a combination of the two two myths so remember an earlier myth about time heals all wounds no it's what you do with that time so if you're um, packing your schedule with busy things um, just to pass the time to try to avoid feeling those feelings, that's not going to be a healthy way for healing them. So I am guilty of this one for sure. My favorite um, keep busy um, tools were Netflix and um, secondhand consignment so store shopping. <laughs> so those were definitely my ones of choice. Um, with a busier lifestyle, we can, yeah, we're easily distracted. Um, unfortunately, when we keep ourselves busy, it just kind of buries the pain and the grief under like a mountain of activities and to-do lists. And it doesn't really help us actually heal us. Um, the authors said that every um, griever that they interviewed when they were doing research for, that, for the book um, is that all of them said basically like a similar statement to this. They said, no matter how busy I keep myself, at the end of the day, I still have a hole in my heart. So that that statement definitely struck my heart and, and it's so true. Like it's, it's the most dangerous thing to think that keeping busy is, is the idea to healing deep pain. Um, it's just a passing the time doesn't automatically heal it. So it all needs to be faced, right? And we're, it's just so easy to not face it. Um, and then, so we pack our to-do lists and we pack our day with activities. And, but then we also at the same day f say, oh, well, I don't, I don't, I would love to have a nap or I would love to visit that friend or I would love to do more meditation or things like that, but I don't have enough time in my busy schedule. I can't fit it in. I think it's all about priorities. Um, unfortunately, like after years and years of piled up um, grief and stuff that we all suffer from different losses that we, we didn't know how to heal properly, one of the number one priorities, unfortunately, becomes avoiding pain. So if we have to keep busy to avoid pain, then that becomes a priority over a lot of other things. Um, I know in my life, in the last few years, as I consciously like, uh, I was feeling the weight of grief for the last few years, for sure. Like I would say like the last five or so longer, five to seven years. So one of my methods is I was actually trying to slow down. <laughs> to like take things off of my list, take things off. But unfortunately, at, at times that made me feel better, but at times when life is slower, everything comes up, right? So I think that's where I adopted being a really good superstar at watching Netflix and buying fabulous things at consignment stores and window shopping, things like that to kind of distract myself. So those were my favorite ones. But after um, unpredicted end of my marriage and a forced grieving process, I had the chance to deeply grieve so many things and in turn just choose to actually slow my life way, way down, even more than I had tried in the last few years. 
And I've noticed that that this time when I chose to slow down, I was doing it differently than last time. And I had more skills under my belt, like this wonderful program that I've been telling you all about. And it helped me. And as much as uh, like a, a different emotional things that I went through, different emotional like regulation courses and therapy and different things that I kind of took on to, to go through this grief, it kind of gave me new tools to use to manage the, the feelings that would come up and to resist that, that feeling to distract and push them away. Because, you know, we've all heard that popular saying, what you resist persists. And it rings so true when it comes to emotions. Um, and if we resist them, they persist. And where they persist is they sit and they fester in our body. And it, like, like I've mentioned in other videos, right? It just sits in a, there for years and years and it impacts our happiness. And we're not even really aware of how much it does until we're able to, I guess, go through a journey where we open that stuff up crazily and bravely it's yeah it's but it's an amazing journey it's life altering i'm here because it has altered my life profoundly and that's why i'm here making these videos for you to share that with you i would have never done this <laughs> like a year ago uh i wouldn't even have like pressed record on a, on a video on a video thing and said much of anything without shutting it off in a few seconds but to speak about this stuff on video and share it with the world yeah that's the that's the stuff that happens when you let go of pain it frees you up for so much i, I could talk forever <laughs> i will talk more in another video but yes i'll leave you with that one so <sighs> try try something different try slowing down see Try to bravely hold those feelings that come up and investigate where, where they come from because your body's trying to tell you that it, it doesn't want to live holding that pain anymore and that there's so much more inside of you and so much more in life to discover when you're not holding the weight of pain and the energy that it saps from you every day. So yes, I'll leave you with that. Be brave, be adventurous, be joyful and heal the pain. <laughs> okay, see you next time, everybody.